Hey, what's up guys, Metal 571 here, and today we're going to be talking about the ZMF Classic. This headphone was provided generously by a viewer. Thank you for letting me borrow this for so long. I'm sorry that took so long. Uh, ZMF themselves however, are not involved in this review in any way, and just in case you think that biases me at all. Um, the price of this headphone, it starts at $299. It's a modified Fostex T50 RP planar magnetic closed back. And uh, I believe this one, I'm pretty sure, is made off of the Mark III uh, because the Mark II has not been available for some time now. This one in particular has got the balanced XLR jacks on it, mini XLR, I should say, which is an option that costs a little extra. So what does this thing sound like? Bass first. Uh, as you'll see in the measurements in the description, uh, the bass really does sound like that. There's quite a significant mid bass hump. I heard it at about 3 dB. I think the measurements show something like 5 dB. Um, it's fun, and the ZMF House Town has kind of had this for a while. If any of you have listened to the ZMF Atticus, you'll know that that headphone also has quite a noticeable mid bass hump. Um, but even though I don't mind it, um, I don't think everyone is going to like that kind of a sound. Uh, especially if you're a classical music aficionado or, as I like to say recently, a serious audiophile music listener. I think the bass here might be a little bit much. Uh, you can EQ it though, which helps, but there's other reasons not to buy this headphone, which I'm going to get into in a little bit here. Uh, but anyway, that's the main thing that sticks out to me in the bass. No other real serious colorations going on. Uh, in the mid bass, I think the mid bass into the low mid transition is probably the highlight of the headphone. Very, very smooth, very accurate. Nothing crazy going on with dips and peaks to my ears there. But the problem begins in the upper mids here. And if you've ever listened to a T50RP mod, you know what I'm talking about. There's always this grainy problem uh, that sometimes is in the mid, sometimes is in the treble, sometimes it's in both. In this one, it's in both, unfortunately, and the problem really starts around 4K where there seems to be a bit of a peak there when there really isn't much of one um, in any of the measurements. And if you actually listen to this thing, you'll see that it sounds way hashier and grainier than the measurements would seem to suggest. Um, some songs sound fine, actually, but others just turn into a mess of distortion, kind of, not like actual clipping distortion or something, but the, the grain in this headphone is so much that it just sounds like distorted over the music, like it's just adding all this extra grit to the sound that shouldn't be there at all, it should be much cleaner. Um, which is kind of disappointing. And the problem continues into the treble. I wrote in my notes here, Ugh, this sounds like a cheap speaker in the treble, and actually it kind of does, unfortunately. <laughs> it sounds very confused, to use Tile's old terminology. Um, again, lots of grain here. I never really liked T50 mods that much, and I know if you guys are going to call me out on the Argon Mark II review I did, which was fairly positive, but I'm pretty sure that that headphone did not have the issues in the mids that this one did, but it still had that aggressive treble that doesn't measure very bright, but sounds much more annoying than it actually measures. Um, and that's kind of the way this is too. I don't think this was as bright as the Mark II. I'll talk more about that a little bit in the conclusion, I think. And some thoughts on the Mark III, even though I don't have it on hand. I'm getting ahead of myself. Um, yeah, the dead giveaway here is the sound of the peaks in the treble here. Um, and if you try to EQ them by hand, you'll notice that they're not really that, uh, they're not really that forward. Like if you EQ them out by as little as 3 dB, they, this headphone sounds more even, but it doesn't change its character at all, that it's just hazy over the entire treble region. Um, and, and strident is another good word, despite EQing the headphone. And that's just the dead giveaway here for me. Um, the, the treble is just not very good quality, I'm sorry. The tuning is not bad at all, but the quality of that treble that's there is just not that great. <laughs> now the soundstage is a little bit of a redeeming factor. Um, some of you might have noticed by now that I'm wearing a different monitoring headphone. Actually the 380s are up, I can never point at the right thing there right now, and that's the 553. And these are the K371s, brand new, I'm going to be reviewing them next. Um, now, compared to the 553 and the K371, I think the soundstage on this thing has a beat. Um, not by a huge margin, but it's definitely better than some closed backs like them. But it still doesn't sound like an open back headphone, of course. 
but there are some ZMFs that really do get close to an open back soundstage, um, like the Atticus and the old school Ori, which used to be called the Omni when I reviewed it. Those have some much better soundstage from what I remember here. Um, but this one's okay. It's nothing crazy, but it's it's better than a lot of the closed backs uh, that are cheaper than it, which one would hope at this price. Um, so some other things about this, I did not test this on tube amps, and I'm sure about 5,000 people are about to shoot off a comment saying this review is wrong because it wasn't done on an OTL. That's fine. You can argue that. I did not test that. This was tested through my usual SDAC balanced and THX 789 reference solid state setup. Um, there's actually quite a bit of amp needs on this one. Uh, pretty much all of Zach's T50 mods have been very difficult to drive uh, in my experience, and this is no different. So you need at least something like an Atom, if not more, uh, if you want to drive this thing. Otherwise, I don't really recommend it. Won't run out of phones very well at all, I would say. <laughs> so in conclusion, unfortunately, this headphone just reminds me that, say, like five years ago, you know, T50 RP mods were all the craze, and I would say even acceptable, perhaps, at the price. But I think in today's day and age and moving forward, I, I, in my opinion, I just think T50 mods in general need to go away, and we need to come up with some new moddable uh, driver because the limitations of what this thing can do in the treble just about always makes its way through any modification I've heard of it and it just it just annoys me so much um, you can EQ it to some degree this one not so great on that um, but I just think that they're pretty expensive for what they are I know this probably sounds totally different than the Argon review but it's also because this is a review that was done quite a bit after that one and and now I'm, I'm gonna set it in stone we need to stop making these <laughs> mods and we need to find a new driver to base some modded headphones on that's what i think you may disagree and that's fine but when things like the k371 and k553 exist the latter of which is discontinued now hence the 371 at like half the price or less it's difficult for me to recommend these t50 mods to be honest which tend to run at least 300 dollars um now the Argon Mark III I heard briefly at Can Jam, uh, but I don't have one on hand, so these impressions can be taken with a grain of salt, but I did want to say that the Mark III sounded warmer and closer to my preference than the Mark II that I had in for review. Uh, however, the bass was just so poor in detail on the Mark III that I heard, and I just I couldn't believe it like I was just playing things as simple as uh, the Haywire sculpted Zeos meme song that he likes to play that I ended up putting on my playlist because I like the way that sounded the bass in that you just cannot follow it it's just mushed into one note um, and I was very surprised at that because the Mark II's bass was much much better and quality but the treble was brighter and talking to Ryan it seemed to me that Ryan said he actually liked the Mark II mod better, but the Mark III, in order to get the treble down further from the T50's issues with the treble, the bass was compromised. So that's kind of made some sense to me. <laughs> this is probably not going to be a very uh, happy review for Argon owners, but that's what I heard at CanJam. I haven't actually heard it at home. So that's just, that's just my meat impressions, which are not particularly important <laughs> compared to reviewing something. So overall, honestly, I just can't recommend this. And ZMF stuff has often been more expensive than its detail and soundstage levels would suggest, but the magic to this brand is really Zach's ear for tuning the frequency response really well. And I get that he probably did everything he could, and this thing is supposed to integrate all of what he learned from the Ori and all those years and years of modding the T50 into one headphone. But I just think that the overall result is just meh, honestly. Um, and if you really want a ZMF, you owe it to yourself to try the dynamics. Um, if they're way out of your price range, hey, you should at least go to a meet and listen to them because they sound absolutely fabulous in tuning to my ear, um, even if they are pretty expensive. And this just doesn't... <laughs> Simple as that, really. It's just not a very special headphone to me. And so 
There's your review of the ZMF Classic. Hope that helps you make a decision on what to buy. And I'll see you guys in the next one. K371 coming next.